Seven Samurai is a Japanese epic samurai drama film from 1954, co-written, edited, and directed by Akira Kurosawa. Originally released on April 26th of 1954 in Japan, Seven Samurai has since gone on to be one of the most remade, reworked, and referenced films in cinema history. Directed by Akira Kurosawa and produced by Sojiro Motoki, Seven Samurai was released on April 26th of 1954 and was well received by its opening Japanese audience. Within the first 12 months of its release, the film went on to earn over 268 million yen, approximately 723,000 US dollars in theaters, making it the Japanese filmmaking company Toho's biggest hit of the year. Calculated for an annual inflation over this period of time, from 1954 to 2020, of 3.48%, the opening 12 months earning of 723,000 US dollars would be equivalent to approximately $7,230,000 in 2020. At a runtime of 3 hours and 27 minutes, including a 5 minute intermission with music, Seven Samurai is the longest picture of Kurosawa's career. According to Kenneth Turan from Criterion, Toho was originally fearful that no Westerner would have the stamina for its original length, and subsequently cut 50 minutes before so much as showing the film to American distributors. Before the advent of DVDs, an abbreviation for digital video disc, various edited versions were distributed on video. However, most of the DVDs and Blu-rays that do exist contain the full film, including the original 5-minute intermission using the DVD transfer from Toho in Japan. The American distribution company focused on important classics, the Criterion Collection, has its own exclusive 2K restoration of the film, which it has released through its U.S. releases since 2006. I know a lot of you study film, go to college, but I also know... <laughs> In 2016, Toho carried out a six-month-long 4K restoration of both Kurosawa's Seven Samurai and his 1952 film, To Live, at the Toho Tokyo Laboratory in Chofu. Due to the fact that the original negatives of the film, a stripper sheet of transparent plastic film in which the lightest areas of the photographed subject appear darkest and the darkest areas appear lightest, was either lost or, as theorized by those at the Tokyo Laboratory, discarded long ago, they were forced to use a second-generation fine-grain positive and third-generation duplicate negative elements to restore the film. The 297,406 frames were individually scanned and digitized, with each receiving at least six copies. Each frame was separated using the RGB color model, an additive color model where red, green, and blue light are added together in various ways to reproduce a broad array of colors, one for red, one for green and one for blue, and subsequently doubled for both low and high exposure in order to obtain the highest image quality possible. Although software within the restoration industry exists for automatically removing dust and noise, the work to remove it was still difficult as buttons on shirts that shine in dark scenes are automatically identified as dust and erased. According to a post from AV Watch, the most difficult scene during the restoration process was the final battle scene that took place during a strong downpour of rain. This is because it's difficult to distinguish between the rain that has fallen and the scratches slash noise on the film. By looking at the work from behind, they were able to identify and correct these small scratches while keeping the intensity and the emotions brought to the scene by the rain. Although the finished product couldn't be screened for Akira Kurosawa himself, the restored 4K film was shown to Seven Samurai's script supervisor, Teruyo Nogami, who said, I was just impressed. I wish I could have shown it to Mr. Kurosawa. I'm sure he would have been happy to see it. Although, as of 2020, this version has not been released anywhere on home video, according to a post on NHK News Web from February 23rd of 2016, the 4K restoration was originally set to be released nationwide on October of 2016. Originally wanting to direct a film about a single day in the life of a samurai, Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai was first meant to be an intimate portrayal of a warrior who got up in the morning, had his breakfast, went to work at his master's castle, and then after making a mistake, would be so disgraced that he would return home and seppuku. Ultimately scrapping this story, Kurosawa then pitched the idea of a film that would cover a series of five samurai battles based on the lives of famous Japanese swordsmen, with his partner and screenwriter Shinobu Hatsimoto going off to write the script. Worrying that a film that was just a series of climaxes wouldn't work, the idea was also scrapped. 
Then, producer Sojiro Motoki found through his historical research that samurai in the Warring States period of Japanese history, also known as the Sengoku period, from 1467 to 1615, would often volunteer to stand guard at peasant villages overnight in exchange for food and lodging. Thus, the story of a group of samurai defending a group of peasant villagers against bandits in exchange for food was born. Where the Soviet montage began, what we now know as a general. The story itself has a rather simple, yet equally engaging premise. A group of bandits eye up a mountain village in hopes of raiding it, but their chief decides to wait until after the harvest they had raided it fairly recently. After overhearing this group of bandits plotting to raid its village, a farmer speaks to his village elder seeking help and advice in saving the village. Witnessing in the past with his own eyes a village who had hired a samurai and remained untouched by raiders, the chief declares they must also hire a samurai to defend them if they wish to survive. Since the village is poor after being raided not too long ago, they can only offer food as payment. The chief, Isaku, advises them to find hungry samurai. The hungry samurai later recruited by a small group of farmers are Kenpei Shimada, played by Japanese actor Takashi Shimura, a war-weary yet strategic ronin, a samurai without a lord or master during the feudal period of Japan, who acted as the leader of the group of samurai and the first to suggest the original intended hiring of three samurai was far too little to defend the village. Gorobe Katayama, played by the Japanese actor Yoshibo Inaba, a skilled archer who acts as Kanbei's second-in-command. Shichiroji, played by the Japanese actor Daisuke Kato, Kanbei's old friend and a former lieutenant. Kyozo, played by Japanese actor Seiji Miyagoshi, a serious stone-faced and skilled swordsman. Katsushiro Okamoto, played by the Japanese actor Isao Kimura, son of a wealthy samurai whom Kanbei reluctantly takes in as a disciple. And Kiko Chio, played by Japanese actor Toshiro Mufune, a humorous yet temperamental rogue who lies about being a samurai in hopes of joining the group, but eventually proves his worth and resourcefulness. <laughs> Long before its release date of April 26, 1954, the film had already become a topic of wide discussion within its three-month-long pre-production and a grueling 148 shooting days done over the span of one year, four times the span covered in its original budget, being covered and critiqued in numerous newspapers across Japan. Toho Studios, the Japanese production company responsible for the film, was forced to close down production twice during the filming of the movie and nearly caused the company to go bankrupt. Both times, Kurosawa calmly went fishing, reasoning that the studio would find the money rather than throw away the project. As they were so committed financially, they had no choice but to finish what was started in order to recoup the costs. Much of the added costs of the film came from Kurosawa's refusal to shoot the peasant village at Toho Studios per the request of the studio and instead had a complete set constructed at Tagaata at the Izu Peninsula of Shizuoka. Kurosawa was adamant that the quality of the set influences the quality of the actors' performances, believing that if the plan of a house and the design of its rooms, for example, are done properly, the actors can move about in them naturally. If I have to tell an actor, don't think about where the room is in relation to the rest of the house, that natural ease cannot be achieved. It restricts the shooting, but encourages that feeling of authenticity. Thanks to the creative freedom provided by the studio, Kurosawa made use of the telephoto lens, a specific type of long focus lens in which the physical length of the lens is shorter than the focal length, and a multi-camera setup which allowed him to fill the screen and place the audience right in the middle of the action. Placing one in the most orthodox shooting position, another place for quick shots, and a third as a kind of guerrilla unit. Kurosawa found this technique of filming so effective that he later used it in many of his other movies that were less action-oriented. <laughs> And if you want something really big... If you want to watch the film in its entirety for yourself, as well as read slash watch the additional content related to the film, you can find links for everything mentioned in both the description and the pinned comment below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button below if you enjoyed the video, as well as leave a comment as to which anime or movie series you'd like us to cover in a future video. If you enjoyed this video and like to not only see them continue but improve in quality, consider supporting us on Patreon or Ko-fi. Links in the description below. Thank you for watching. My name is Skidderine, and if you want to know more about me, check out my Twitter at Skidderine. Or a sequence or the entire plot. Now I understand why this film has been remade.